Okay, so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, gluten-free. I'm doing this gluten-free challenge, um, originally hosting it in April 2016, but it's ongoing at blissdetox.com. And you can see, but what they can't see because I'm turned this way, is that this entire part of my face is turning white. So I've got white on my chin, white across my forehead. I can't go out in the sun anymore, instant burn. Progressively turning white over the past year. So it's been almost a year that this since this showed up. Um, Vitiligo, it, it's called. Vitiligo. Yeah. Uh, did blood work, look normal. Of course, most people, when they go to their doctors, their blood work is going to come back normal if there's not... if it, Blood work's tricky because you have to know where you were and where you are now and, and are they looking at your hormones. And so there's lots of different variables when it comes to what your doctor might be ordering when it comes to your blood work, how to read it, you know, who's looking at it might see something different. So there's that. So... I looked, it looked normal. I feel great. So I largely just ignored it. It's not a big deal. Like my skin's changing color, but who cares? I, I don't even have the time to go do the light therapy stuff because I just don't care enough. But then I'm talking to my girlfriend about my period. Nicole. Nicole. Nicole Jardim. I'll, I'll put her link uh, down below in the video description on for my people. Um, so I go to to her and I'm telling her about my period because she has this program fix your period she's brilliant she's really good at what she does since I had baby number four I've had a really heavy period my period has always been on time like to the day um, since I was 13 years old in fact all of my children are born in the 20s of every month so that's how regular I am oh. I always ovulate at the same time but after baby number four, it became very heavy. Baby number five, it's so heavy. And sorry, gentlemen who are watching this, but baby number five, it's so heavy that I can't leave the house for 48 hours every month. I plan my whole life around it. I can't work. I can't leave the house. I can't drive in the car because it's it's not painful, but it's just too heavy. Wow. Do you get exhausted? That's a no, lot. No, I feel, I feel fine. Like oh, okay. everything feels good, except I have this very heavy, scarily heavy period talking to Nicole about it and she's like okay 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 um she's talking about progesterone she's talking about you know Nicole by the way is a hormones expert yes yeah yes. somebody had asked a question and if I could discuss lady parts yeah you don't want <laughs> you, you love lady want, parts you though. don't want the Mike Green's guide to lady parts okay I think Nicole's well so we're gonna skip that today yeah, yeah, Nicole's yeah. the one to ask about the lady parts and I'd love to be part of that conversation but okay sure. so 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 She's talking about all kinds of stuff, and, and I, I don't want to give you too much information about what her advice was for me because this is me. She knows me. Right. Okay. So all this being said, this is this is about me. Um, so she looked at my skin, though, and she's like, okay, so vitiligo, too. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Can totally be related to what's happening in my body right now. They asked me about my diet, of course, like any good – nutrition expert would, you know, what my doctor should have asked me, never did, never mm -hmm. asked me what I ate. Um, asked me about my diet. Oh, so you do, do you eat a lot of bread? Do you like gluten? Oh my gosh. Well, since becoming a vegetarian a year ago, I'm like a loaf of bread a day, like Italian loaf of bread a day. That's what we do. I used to eat a loaf of Ezekiel <laughs> bread, which is this sprouted grain bread. I used to eat yeah. a loaf a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's not Ezekiel bread that I'm eating. So uh -huh. I'm getting the Italian loaf from my local grocery. I'm dipping it in the olive oil. Um, uh, lots starch, of starch and fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. All day long, every day. And then, mysteriously, my skin starts to turn white and my periods are out of control. <laughs> so our plan of action at first. So we're going to go way deeper. She's going to look deeper into my blood work. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm also working with a naturopath um, that's a good friend of mine. Uh First plan of action, easy thing to do. Why don't you just cut out that gluten and see what happens? That day I stopped. And this is interesting because I am so, you know me, I'm so resistant. I don't want to, I don't want to give up anything. I like mm -hmm. complain. I, but this was like, no, this, if this is really hurting me, this is it. Like I'm done. And I stopped and I didn't have cravings. There was no regret. It's been so easy. It's been three weeks now at the time that we're doing this. And I've, I, like I said, I had four Girl Scout cookies over the past three weeks, um, ate one, was like, okay, whatever. I, I don't, I'm doing it out of habit at this point. Invite people along to do it with me because I have to market everything. <laughs> and then the more I'm reading about gluten, this is, okay, so I want you to talk a lot about this. The more I'm reading about gluten, it's like, why are we eating this anyway? This isn't good for anybody. For those who don't know, let's talk about what gluten is. It's a series of proteins in 
different grains. So it's in wheat, it's in barley, it's in rye, it's in another one called trictical, and some other grains that are less well known. Uh, here's, here's the thing, let's start with this to understand why this would even be a problem. Uh, grains aren't really human food, okay? That gets confusing to people because we all know that when we go from white flour and pasta and, you know, burger buns and pizza and we go into like whole wheat pasta and whole wheat muffins, that's supposed to be healthy. So we're like, but it's only healthy because it's getting less and less refined. So we're right. adding in more fiber, more nutrients. Uh, it leaves the body a little more easily. And then when you get into a bowl of brown rice or a bowl of quinoa, it gets even better. Right. Yeah. So, um, but we're not really grain eaters. It's what's made us. It's what what has allowed us to build civilization because it's concentrated sun energy that we can make into breads and and things like that. Um, it's allowed us to not hunt and gather as much anymore. Farming had a lot to do with that. And and, and animal. And by the way, this is what the paleo people are saying. Yes, and they're right. They're a hundred percent right. Okay. Um, Dr. Hiromi Shinya, I was just on Snapchat the other day. I was just reading, uh, telling people about his argument against um, his ratio of animal protein in a diet is seven to one, seven uh, vegan foods, one animal food. Sounds and he good. was talking about the chimpanzee diet. And we share an anatomical structure and digestive organs with the chimpanzees. We don't have to eat like them. Uh, we also don't have to eat people's faces. Chimpanzees uh, do that. I know. I, I have, you know, that thing on that poor woman. You've seen her on Oprah and on TV. I don't. don't. It's, oh, it's just, all right. Move on. And I used to <laughs> I think. I was trying to make a joke. And I, we just. <laughs> I used to think chimps were cute. I'm just terrified of these animals now. Nope, not okay. But here, here's, the chi- here's the chimp diet. It's 50% fruits, 45% vegetables and roots and, and, and leaves, yeah. and then 5% insects. And they, yes. do, they do some weird shit where they eat each other and they, they do very, very small percentage of that where they eat birds and they eat each other and do weird shit like that. But if you look at that digestive anatomy and you look at it, there's no grain in there. There's no bread in there. There's no right. pasta in there. It's really not our food. So the, the less refined we get it, the better. Now, one of the, uh, meaning like we can still eat grains, but if you're eating quinoa and wild rice and millet and things like that, they deliver energy, they're nutrient dense, and they leave the body much more easily than the bagels and the pasta and all that stuff. Right. Um, we fell in love with it because it lights up the same pleasure centers in the brain as drugs do. What did you say before? Before, when, yeah. I, when I mentioned bagel. We were in another video and you said bagels and I was like, oh. Bagels. Right. Now, if I said it's, asparagus, what would, you, would you go, ah, oh, asparagus? Probably not. No. You'd be like, okay, asparagus. If I said <laughs> apples, you'd be like, what about? Right? <laughs> but, but why did you have that? You had that because it's, it's like it's something that, that yeah. makes us happy. Now, why the yeah. fuck would a bagel make us happy if it's just food? Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be just food like an apple, but it, it's not. You know, it has a totally different effect. So we fell in love with that. And we fell in love with playing with that stuff. So gluten-containing grains, so when you make bread, um, uh, you, the best breads are made out of wheat and barley and spelt and, um, and the, pretty much those, wheat being the number one. Uh, there's these proteins that get stringy when you develop them. That's what kneading bread is. Okay. So when you knead the dough, you have to develop it. So if you don't knead it enough, the bread doesn't have that nice structure. So basically when bread's fermented, either you add yeast in or you lacto-ferment it naturally like sourdough bread. Where you, where you allow um, a live culture of My yeast to come in. My 18 year into that. Oh, it's, She's doing yeah. a sourdough starter. It's very science-y. If it is. And if you're going to eat, it's a lot of fun. Like, you know, people have had cultures. When, when September 11th happened in New York, there were chefs that went to their restaurants and grabbed their yeah. sourdough starter and brought it home because they did not want it to die. Cause For it generations. Be generations yeah. of sourdough, which is amazing. Um, so it's a very cool thing that we do with that. And, and sourdough bread is more digestible than, than regular regularly yeasted bread. Mm. Uh, but so when you see those little bubbles, that's the bacteria, that's the yeast eating the sugars and farting basically and creating pockets. Mm-hmm. What allows those pockets to form in there is the gluten strands. Okay, so the the protein kind of I don't know exactly what happens there, but you know it, it it stretches out, and if you overwork it, then you get like the really tough bread because the gluten strands are overproduced. This is why baking is such a science. But why is this bad for us? Well, we're going to get to that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, ex- I'm just explaining in my long-winded like, way why, why what can't I is. eat bread anymore or bagels? So, so, he- so here's what happened. So this, so this exists. Now, number one, it's not a human food. Number two, we wanted better breads. So what happened was we hybridized them to be stronger in gluten. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's been found, now there's something called celiac disease, that's actually uh, uh, genetically triggered, and 
those are people that are highly, highly gluten intolerant, meaning yes. the, the, this protein comes into the body and there's a whole chain of chemistry that happens that causes lots of inflammation, diarrhea, bloating, and um, actually makes its way into the blood. So gluten, from, from what I understand, and there's a lot of studies on gluten now, from what I understand, the gluten molecule does not digest by anybody. Nobody breaks it down. It either right. passes through the body whole or it passes, it can permeate the gut in whole form. The mm -hmm. body breaks down proteins and it breaks them up into uh, you know amino acids right and then it restructures them and builds cells or whatever we're doing protein goes in as a whole as a, the gluten goes in as a whole protein and our immune system goes what the fuck is this protein doing in the blood because we're not supposed to have it there right and it starts to make antibodies and it actually has an, an inflammatory response and an immune response to and then it. my skin turns white Possibly, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, there's a whole <laughs> host of problems from yeah. psychological problems to inflammation in the gut to headaches. To, like, there's a whole host of problems that they're associating this to list. this now. So, autoimmune diseases known to be related to gluten sensitivity celiac, Hashimoto, Graves' disease, rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. um, vitiligo, multiple sclerosis, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, dermatitis herpetiformis, herpetiformis and type 1 diabetes. I should have rehearsed that, but yeah. And you know, the, the symptoms range from, um, from very light to almost unnoticed to extreme. So uh, interesting thing, I used to be a pastry chef. I worked in the old school world at Angelica Kitchen when I started uh, of making stuff, lots of whole wheat flour, mm -hmm. whole wheat pasta, whole, everything I made was whole wheat, whole wheat cakes, whole wheat muffins, you know. I, li I'm, I was allergic to cats my whole life. Dairy and wheat were the big um, were the big contributors to that, and I didn't realize it. So I had been vegan, I quit dairy, but I was eating all this wheat. But why I, is I'm, that? So why would put introducing these things into your body cause you to be allergic to something unrelated? It's called the secondary allergy. So when your body's in a heightened state of immune response, and then you go around another potential allergy, and it's it's specific to individual people, right? Um, all of a sudden, you're much more prone to respond to it. So mm -hmm. I used to. I, so I moved into an apartment with uh, my ex, and we were in a Little East Village apartment. She had a cat. I moved in with like my worst enemy. Not really, because she's my she's my best friend, my little kitten. But I sit down on the couch with her. My eyes are watering. I'm sneezing for days. You know. Mm -hmm. and now I live with her. One day I decided to stop eating wheat and to move just to spelt. Spelt still has some gluten in it, but not as strong as the wheat flour. All of a sudden, I could sit on the couch with the cat. Everything was fine. And I was like, well, and I mean like within three days. And I was like, wow, that's wow. interesting. And that worked for a while. And then when I got into raw food and I got into that and I went totally gluten free, my allergies really dropped with the cat. So it was, I wasn't having bowel digestive issues. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any inflammation that I was aware of, anything right. like that. I was young. I was, you know, my, everything was working well in my I've body. I've eaten bread my whole life. Right. And been fine. But that's how it was affecting me. And you mm -hmm. go, wow, so okay, systemically, that's what was happening to me, triggering a secondary allergy. So there was some low level thing that I was just sort of, um, you know, reaching some sort of homeostasis and like not even realizing that I was under, that my body was under the stress of that. Then I take it off and I go, I can breathe. Yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on. Everything, you know. So, so gluten not being people food, is it, what I hear is that it's not unlike dairy. So cow dairy specifically. Right. So people are eating it in mass amounts, you know, lots and lots of cheese, lots of milk, lots of butter, all those things. And a lot of people look like they're thriving. Right. And some people are very affected by it. I am severely lactose intolerant. If I had a straight like half cup of milk, I would just, I'd die. I'd be right to the bathroom. Um, but everyone's kind of a little bit intolerant to, to cow dairy. It's just different levels. It's you know it's it's kind of like um, it's kind of like alcohol. Like who, our body doesn't like who, it. Who can do who can drink who under the table is is the way. Like who it, we our bodies tolerate different things based mm -hmm. on our genetic strengths and weaknesses, right? And also based on our age. So of course, like young people, yeah, they'll get a bunch of pimples, but they're not going to like you know ha it's not going to affect them as much as it does some of the older people. Oh, we got to do know, a raw because, milk video. That'll be for the dairy detox. Raw milk, of course, like as I said, going from like don't give it away. Refined, no, no, I'm just saying, <laughs> raw milk. It's it's the same thing. Like you get into some biodynamic raw milk or whatever, it's going to be much easier to digest than it would be the pasteurized stuff with the blood and the pus and the you know what sure. I mean, the shit. And there's stuff it's, in there. There's there's nutrients. There's stuff in there that your body can use. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that thrive on raw milk, even though it's not a human food. I mean, there's whole cultures. The I think the Maasai tribe they mix blood and milk together, mm -hmm. and they're thin and strong, and they could outrun any of us, and they 
they've got beautiful teeth. I mean, it's there are people yeah. living in the natural world that eat animal food. Yeah. But you know, quality of course is always a consideration. Right. Yeah. Most people are not drinking raw milk. Not the people no. that are watching this. And we know? have a big problem. Did you see what happened in um, California? There is a, a, a co-op out there, and it's a club. We have clubs like this in New York too, because you can't sell raw milk without like creating some special structure around it, and they right. have a club. These you need maniacs. A, a milk cult to basically yeah, so you be may, able to do exactly. It. <laughs> you need a milk cult. So there's a milk cult, a raw milk cult in California, <laughs> and there was some issue where they weren't supposed to be selling some type of cheese or milk or something. They came in with guns drawn. You could Google this. It's crazy. They they were pointing guns at people. This in the was a while co-op. ago. It's about four or five years ago. Yeah, yeah. I've seen this. Insane. Yeah. Over raw milk. Yeah. I don't want the government to protect me from my food. Well, I mean, they're protecting the dairy industry from their profits. Right. So there's that. Um. <laughs> you love how I get all long-winded in storytell? I'm, I, yeah. The gluten thing, though. So it's not people food. It's not and people food. I think that I, I believe, and this is not medical advice. This is just me saying, just from my own research and my own experience, I think that we're all better off without it. We're not going to lose anything by getting it out of our diet. We have a lot to gain. In these threads, though, when we're talking about the gluten, I'm getting, and it's in every one, people are freaking out and they're going, but I'm in Europe and the wheat's so much better here. The bread is better, which it is, but it still has gluten in it. It does. Yeah. So it's still, it's, I mean, we're talking about a higher quality thing that is still not people food. We're, yeah, we're talking about a higher quality. We might be talking about a more ancient strain. Mm-hmm. Uh, spelt was a more ancient strain, not as hybridized, and people do a lot better with it. So wheat-sensitive yeah. people, like I did better on spelt when I initially was doing it, you know. Um, but it just comes down to, you know, if gluten's not an issue in your life, we're not trying to convince anybody to get off of it. We're just saying the science is in that this could be causing a whole bunch of problems, so we're yeah. getting off of it, and this is kind of like really cool. Like we're experiencing like really cool mm-hmm. shit from getting off of well, it. Well, I'm getting off of it. I'm staying off of it because it was easy – this is this is my process. Um, if it was really, really hard and I was missing it very badly, I was still going to commit to the 30 days. And then I would say, maybe I can introduce it in small amounts. But I don't miss it. You know, I'm feeling really, really good. Uh, I did have some days where I was extremely tired, but I'm not shoving my body with, you know, sugars and carbs all day. So that's going to be natural. So I was feeling a little bit shitty for a little bit of time. But I'm just saying – you don't know how good you can feel until you actually feel that good. So let's try it for 30 days and see what happens. It's a good challenge. Yeah, I mean, mean, with all of these, I'm dairy-free, meat-free. I started my vegetarian journey going meat-free for 30 days as a challenge with my private Facebook group. I would say a good, the majority of those people are still meat-free because it was like, oh, wait, oh, I thought I felt good. But now this is what good feels like. So let's yeah. let's take it another step. Let's just do these things little bits at a time. I'm just easing you into it. It's not a big deal. Like let's do the gluten for 30 days. Maybe we'll try sugar. <laughs> and then we'll do, uh, which I'm good with because when I removed so the thing that the foods that I was eating that had the gluten were also the foods that were carrying the added sugar. So I kind of accidentally just gave up my added sugar. So that's done. Um, we're going to do sugar for 30 days and, you know, we're going to maybe have a vegan challenge for 30 days. It's like, to- like specifically vegan and see what we can do with that. Um, here's an important thing with gluten that I want to throw in there. Yeah. So gluten means glue from the Latin word, uh, mm-hmm. is the Latin word gluten or something similar? And anyway, so it's gluteonium in this. Is it? Is that what it Caesarus. is? Caesarus. Caesar's in there too. <laughs> Um, makes sense. Okay. So, um, you know, gluten from the work, most people give up the glue and I notice that they start replacing it with cement. So, so what's the cement? Cement are these gluten-free breads that first oh, of all yes, taste. Yes, yes, We have to talk about this. They first of all taste like shit anyway. Yeah. They're made out of tapioca starch, potato starch, xanthan gum, all this bullshit. Yeah. Like we don't need to eat bread. Like, <laughs> but this is the same it, thing with meat. People get rid of meat and then they want chick nuggets. Right. It's the same thing. By the way, Satan, remember you were going to name a video like. Why is wheat Satan or something like that? Oh, or, yeah. I think it was so gluten. Yeah. You, know, you know what Satan is, right? S-E-I-T-A-N. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So you're- I don't like it. You but. need- You make bread dough with high gluten flour. You knead it. Then you put it under water. And you knead it under water. And all the starch washes away. And all that's left is protein. So it's pure gluten. Satan is I pure did not know that. Gluten. Yeah. So, I mean- and. For vegetarians that don't have a gluten problem, it's like amazing because you can marinate it and it tastes like shredded steak. And it just, we used to do a lot of this back in the old health food restaurants, Satan. See, my thing is, 
I'm not trying to replace things that I used to eat with fake versions of it. I'm right. just, I'm not, it's processed food. Okay. So like, let's talk about it in terms of that. Just eat less processed foods. Bread is a processed food. All of these fake meats are processed foods. So you don't need them. You can go to Whole Foods, like not the store. I don't shop at Whole Foods. I have nothing against it. I just don't live in an area that they have one. I wouldn't anyway. I shop at ShopRite. Uh, <laughs> and Aldi. I love Aldi. It's such a great store. So many great organic options and low prices, but whatever. Um, I, I like fruits. I like vegetables. I do eat quinoa for dinner often because it's, you know, other people in my family are still eating meat or whatever. I do eat soy. I eat tofu. Um, sometimes I've been cutting back on that. Um, no particular reason. I just don't want to eat a ton of tofu, but I'm putting that in. But just just go to, to less processed foods. When it comes to the carbs, my yeah. suggestion for everybody, uh, quinoa, millet, wild rice. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Brown rice, if you, if you want something a little heavier, moves through the body well. Don't, put, yeah. don't replace glue with cement. Yeah. Once you put the cement in, because you'll experience, like, okay, so if you eat these fake gluten free breads and all this kind of stuff, if you're having a, an inflammatory response to gluten, you'll feel amazing because systemically you're not having that response, but it's hard to pass that kind of shit. Yeah. So, oh, I have supermodel poop. That hashtag is now trending. Is that supermodel poop? Because I didn't go to the, I, I tried a gluten free pasta on Easter because I had to make It's um, now trending. <laughs> I made I macaroni this. and cheese for my family. So I just wanted to try a gluten free option. No one could tell the difference. It, the texture was a little bit different um, when it needed to be, when it went into the refrigerator or whatever. But I, um, I didn't replace those. So I just was like, okay, well, I'm just taking it out. I'm going to continue to eat the way that I was eating minus this. So it's fruits and vegetables mostly during the day and then having my like steamed veggies or roasted veggies with my quinoa and, and all that, my coconut oil, which I love so much. And yeah, I like, I, it's an experience when I talk about coconut oil. <laughs> it's just like the best thing ever. It's more, incredible. More than bagels. Um, so I did that and it's like, I mean, poops that I've never seen before. And I apologize again, but like they're supermodel, long, lean, no blemishes. They're the most beautiful poops in the universe. Good color. I mean, I'm, I'm, I kid you not like the, and it feels good. And can we see this on Instagram? Snapchat? We, we can. I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> that's my boundary. But repeating that, I'm so glad that you said that glue repeating that every time I think about wanting gluten again, that that's, I'm putting glue, not just sludge, because sludge can kind of like get work its way out. I'm putting glue in my system. That's preventing my body from absorbing nutrients. It's preventing things from moving through. That's what you have to think about. It's just not good for you. It doesn't, the vitality can't happen because there's so much obstruction. Yeah. And gluten-free grains leave the body pretty well. Oatmeal, no glue. All right, eat quinoa. All right. Well, thank you for doing this. My people are going to be so excited. They sweat you so hard. Um, and there's going to be more videos like this as part of the blissdetox.com series. Happy to do it. I love I love Bex lifers. We're going to make people angry in every single one. Like, no, I want my dairy. But it's good for you. Just let it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't resist. I had that experience in Jamaica. Food sucks some chocolate. It's like the first French guy you have in Paris. This is Beck's life. We don't have this. I'm like on you. That's okay. (laughs) Hey guys, it's Bex here. And this is a very special video. I know they're all special. And I say that at the top of every video. But this is super special. 